Hey everyone, my name is Prakash. I'm one of the co-founders and the co-CEO of Zeno. With us also is Mr. Michael Udinsky. He's our customer success lead. Say hi, Michael. Hey everyone. Today, we're going to go through a very quick 10 to 15 minute demo on how you can make a restaurant note taking app using Google's open AI. If you haven't heard of this uh, API before, it basically is uh, Google's artificial intelligence engine, which allows you to basically enter some text input, tell it a command, and it will do amazing things. So for this one, uh, you know, sometimes you go to a restaurant, you just want to take some quick notes about it, and then this will generate a whole review. And uh, it's really amazing, right, Michael? Yeah, absolutely. I just saw it for the first time, and I think you guys are going to think it's really, really cool. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with the database. And as I flush this out, maybe Michael can just talk a little bit about the database in Zeno. Yeah, absolutely. So what you're going to see here uh, is a very familiar spreadsheet setup. Um, we already have some schema or columns set up. We have a name field, an email field, and a password. Uh, and as you can see, this is for our user. Prakash is just entering some uh, raw data in here into the spreadsheet, giving us a couple of users. Um, as you can see, just some dummy data. And now we're gonna kind of go back into the next table um, and we're gonna actually create some columns or schema here by hitting that plus button. Uh, Prakash is gonna uh, create a text field here. As you can see, when he hits this plus button, there's just different data types that open up. Um, so he created a name for a restaurant as a text field, a review. And now he's going to make a relationship here with this table reference option to our user table. Yeah, and we're gonna use the API to actually fill out this information, but it's worth noting that you can actually use the spreadsheet view as well. So if I wanted to go ahead and fill out a restaurant, one of my favorites in Santa Barbara is Via Maestra. And I can just say, uh, this is amazing Italian food and I can associate it with an ID. So you can do it either way, but in today's example, we're gonna use the API to do this. So I'll go to the API and you can think of the API as like a messenger that communicates between your backend and your front end or other services that you interact with. By default, we create an API group for you. You can think of that like a folder that organizes your API endpoints. And by default, we create all of the CRUD or create, read, update, delete operations for your API. For this example, we're gonna create a new API endpoint and I'll call it review generator. And I'll go ahead and click save. So I think that when we think about creating an API endpoint, you kind of have to think through the business logic. And so in this case, we want to call an external API. And so calling an external API, uh, we can use the function stack. This is our no-code API builder. What inputs do the does the user enter in? What functions get executed when this API is called? And finally, what does it return to the front end? So I'm gonna to go to our function stack. I'm gonna click add function and I'll do an external API request over here. Michael, maybe you can just describe the dynamics of an external API and import curl. Yeah, definitely. So with the external API, as you can see on this right screen, there's different components to it. Um, first and foremost, the URL. So when you call it external API, there's going to be a URL associated with it. And this is what Xano actually uses to call and either get that data or perform that action that interacts uh, with that API. Um, there's other things in here like the method or, or verb you might see, uh, parameters that needs to be passed, any headers needed to be defined. Um, but what we can do with this import curl is sometimes these external APIs uh, in their documentation might have something called a curl command. Um, and this basically, what we can do is we can basically import this into Xano and it will uh, programmatically build out the API call um, with all these options here on the right uh, so that we can actually make that API call. Yeah, and almost all the time when you are connecting with an external API in their documentation, they'll have a curl command. So in this other tab over here, I have beta.openapi.com. And in examples, they actually have a uh, restaurant review creator. Now, the way that uh, it works is you can basically freeform type in text and it will do anything that you want. In this uh, specific case, this API, you specify a name and just some high level notes and it's gonna return back a review for you. And notice how in the documentation, it has a curl command that you can just copy. So I'll go ahead and copy this curl command and I'm gonna go back to Xano and I'll just click import curl and I'll go ahead and paste that over here, okay? 
And so what it's going to do is it's going to basically explode out the different values of that API request, and then it's going to ask for authorization. Now, while I get the authorization key, Michael, can you just talk about authorization and external APIs in general? Yeah, absolutely. So just in general, uh, authorizations and uh, external APIs are often going to be required, not always. Um, but basically, when you go to that service uh, and sign up, they'll give you some kind of uh, API secret key or authentication key. And this is so that API knows uh, that someone who is actually authorized is calling this API. So this will be a long encrypted key. You shouldn't share it with other people. You should um, try to keep those private if you can. Um, and that's all that that's saying right there. It's basically giving a valid handshake from Xano, who's calling the API uh, to that external service. Yeah, exactly. So you can see now that what we're doing is we're calling this API and the results of that API are going to be stored in this thing called a variable. You can think of a variable like a container for information and you can store like a single line of text or a massive payload of information. And then it's going to return that to the front end. And the way to test that is you just click the run and debug button over here and you click run and then uh, it's going to go ahead and return the response from open API if I've done this correctly. Here uh, you can see the request ran successfully, and then it returns all of the request and response headers of that API request. So this is what I requested from the API, and this is the return. And then in that return, you have the text. So uh, just like it says here in this example, it wrote a couple notes about the blue wharf, and it returned that same response over here. Now, the cool thing is that if we go to that API, you can see because Xano uh, explodes out the different pieces of it, we can actually just go into the prompt itself and we can make some modifications. So Michael, give me a name of a, uh, a restaurant that you like and some things that you like about it. Yeah, definitely. Let's go with uh, one nearby. It's called Pueblo. Okay. And we'll say this has uh, great Mexican seafood. Um, okay. good atmosphere and good we'll say atmosphere. strong margaritas, really strong margaritas. Okay. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and click save and I'll update this. So if I've done this correctly and I run this, I should see, uh, open APIs, uh, <laughs> constructed review. So I, I would say that's actually pretty good. Um, it's a pretty amazing uh, API that you can use to generate reviews. So the cool thing about this is we've hard-coded uh, Michael's re reviews or notes into this API. But traditionally, you're going to actually want to take in inputs from the user and have that be a variable, right, that, that gets fed into this API. So we're going to add two inputs. What are the inputs we're going to add, Michael? Uh, so we're going to want a restaurant name. Okay. All right, done. And then we're going to want one either uh, review or notes, maybe. Okay, we'll just do restaurant notes just to okay. keep it simple. Um, so we'll just do that for right now, restaurant name and restaurant notes. And so what we can do over here is in this review, when we click on this, we basically want to replace these two elements, okay? And in programming, there is a command called sprint F where you can put in a variable or a string that gets replaced by whatever you tell it. So I'm going to enter in percent S two times, um, which basically is tell, tells Xano to look for this and then replace it when we put in the filter. I'll add a filter and then um, in filters, I can just search for sprint F. Filters in general are a way to transform data into anything that you want. And in the arguments, it always does it in order. So the first one was the name of the restaurant. And I can do that by going the input of restaurant name. So what I'm just entering here is actually that input that I entered in over here. And then finally, I'll do the input of that restaurant notes, which is this over here. So now with this done, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And if I run this again, it's then going to ask me to or to enter in name and notes uh, directly here because that's the inputs that I specified. Michael, give me another re uh, restaurant name and some notes about why you uh, like it. Let's go with Firestone. Firestone. Okay, Firestone. And why do you like it? Uh, so tender tri-tip, uh, patio tri seating. Patio good, seating, okay. Good sweet barbecue sauce. Sweet, sweet BBQ sauce. Okay, we'll we see what it does with that. Okay. 
Well, look at that. The tri-tip is cooked to perfection and the sauce is to die for. The patio seating is a great bonus, especially in the summertime. This thing is amazing. Very, very accurate right. right there. All right. So now we have that information there. Um, but traditionally, you're you're not just going to want to run it. You may want to store that in the database. So the user is taking notes and they want to store that in the database. Um, so going to the database, I can see that in the restaurant table, it asks for a couple of things. It asks for the name, the review itself, but it also asks for the user ID, right? So in the API, we need to add one more input. And what is that input, Michael? So we're going to take in the user's email address um, yep. because that's going to be associated with their account. And with that email address, we'll be able to actually um, get the user record. So then we can uh, use that to add to our restaurant database table as Prakash is doing right here. So he's going into get record. It's another function. He's going to get a record from the user table. And right here, what we're seeing in these inputs, we have something called the field name. So those are the different fields in our user table. Right now, it's defaulted to ID, um, but you can see there's also created at name, email, password. So we're just going to switch that with the drop down menu to our email. And the field value is the value of that field that we're going to look up. And in this case, it's going to be our user email. Great. So I'm going to click save. And I actually want to move this up over here because the first thing that I want to do is uh, get the user email. And then I want to run this request. And then afterwards, I want to then have one more function to write to the database. So I've I've gotten the, the record from the user. I've run this API request. The third thing that I want to do is go ahead and add a record to the database. And I'm going to add it to the restaurant uh, table. And then this uh, function is going to ask me for a couple things. First, when should this be created? I'll just say right now. That's the time of executing the record. Um, the name of the restaurant I'm going to get from the user input over here. So let's do the restaurant name. And then uh, the review, we're going to leave blank for right now. I'll show you how to get that. And then for the user ID, now remember, the first thing that we did, as Michael instructed, is we got the uh, user using that user email address, and we're returning it as the user1 variable. So what we can actually do is select user1 here, but we want the ID, right? And you can see if you look at the database preview that user ID is here, and we can use this thing called dot notation, which allows you to drill into the specific fields. So I'm just going to go user one dot ID, and I'll go ahead and select that there, and I'll save it. So uh, what I want to do in terms of uh, returning that review, you'll remember that I returned a really big payload of information, right? But I only wanted that review text. So let me show you how to just drill in and get just that review text. And I'm gonna first do that by hiding these two functions. I'm gonna go ahead and run this here and I get this big payload back, right, of everything. And remember, we just want the text over here. So I can actually copy the results and then I can unhide these and then I can go into add record from restaurant, all right? So here, what I can do is I want to get the results from API 1. But there is a subpath over here. And that allows me to paste in that big response that I got and define it and traverse into that response and get that uh, text of what's important to me. So I can see the preview over here. I'm going to say text. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Just taking a step back, I've gotten three inputs from the user. I've collected their name, the notes, and then the email that's writing those notes. I've looked up the user by their email address. I've run the external API from open API. And then finally, I've added the record to restaurant, right? So if I've done everything correctly, which I hope I have, Michael, you'll correct me if I haven't, uh, it should then add Firestone to the database. So I need to add in the user. So that's michael at email.com. I'm going to go ahead and run this. So it looks like everything ran correctly. If I go over to my database and I click on restaurant, you can now see that Firestone has been added. That long review that uh, Open API generated is here. And then finally, the user ID Michael is populated. So this was a very quick example of how you could basically use Xano 
Uh, and just in a couple minutes, connect to an external API and leverage it to add data to the database. Michael, is there anything else that you want to add regarding the things that we covered here today? Uh, no, other than I would say, you know, this is one really cool use case, but it's really just still scratching the surface of all the power and everything that Xeno can do. Um, but as you can see, we make it very easy to interact with other services, such as um, the Google OpenAI, um, taking in that data, adding it to the database. And also, for example, we were able to easily get um, uh, data in from our user table into our restaurant table. So um, the possibilities are endless, but we just wanted to show you something cool to help you get started. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much and happy building.